So now let's calculate equilibrium. And let's actually use it to find Ks and how much product or reactant there are at those equilibrium positions. So you can see that our reactions are not going to completion. Now, just a disclaimer, this, re this podcast is going to be longer than 15 minutes. It contains nothing but example problems because that's the easiest way to explain how to calculate equilibrium. So all of them are basically going to be the same. There's going to be some twists and turns, but you don't have to sit down and watch this whole podcast to, to get the gist. Once you've got one, you can kind of just jump to the next problem and do it all on your own. So now let's look at a problem. A mixture of 0.1 moles of NO, 0.05 moles of H2, and 0.1 moles of H2O is placed in a one liter vessel. The following equilibrium is established. So here's the chemical reaction in, uh, that is going to be established at equilibrium. Notice it's already balanced for you. At equilibrium, the concentration of NO is 0 0.062 molarity. Calculate the equilibrium concentrations of H2, N2, and H2O. Now, this is very different than what we've done before because in the past, what we would have done is we'd find the moles of NO, we'd set up our mole ratio, we'd find the moles of the other substances, we'd convert to grams, and boom, we're done. However, this is equilibrium. So everything's not going to completion. So there'll be some, we don't know how much is going to decrease over the whole process. So let's, let's do some calculations and let's set up a little chart to help us keep track of everything. This is what is called an ice box. Ice box, <clears throat> excuse me, ice box stands for initial change and equilibrium. Now, as in a little side and a little embarrassing story too, um, I started teaching the ice box about uh, not in my first year. In my I would say it's in my second year, and it was after my first year that I I taught it the way I was learned. I was taught it in college, and I said, "Wow, my students are really struggling with this. I really wish there was a different way to do it." And I realized that if I put it into a chart, that it would work so well. And I I labeled it initial change in equilibrium because that's how my t professor had uh, arranged it for me when I was in college. And then I'm flipping and then we get a new textbook in the school and I'm flipping to the equilibrium unit and there's the ice box sitting in a textbook. And here I thought at the age of 24 years old that I had like reinvented the method for teaching equilibrium and it turns out my professor was just really behind the times and didn't teach me the proper method for calculating equilibrium. I thought I was so special. Turns out I was nothing more than everyone else was and I felt very disheartened and it was I always get the Every time I get to equilibrium, I smile and I laugh. And I think about that, about Doc Ock in college and for not using the icebox. And he should have taught it from, me from the beginning so I wouldn't be so embarrassed when I went to go teach it. Um, finally, was teaching it on my own in high school. So anyway, I digress. Okay, so along the top <clears throat> is you're going to insert your substances. Okay, and personally, and you don't have to do this, I always put where my double arrow is so I remember which substances are reactants and which substances are products. Now, icebox only gets molarity or atmospheres, but for our purposes, it's going to be like 90% molarities. So you only get molarities. Notice I say this because they gave me moles. Okay, so I have to quick do a mole conversion before I start. Well, remember that molarity is equal to moles over liters. So I'm just going to divide by the total liters in my solution, or in my, my, my mixture. So my NO is 0 0.100 divided by 1, which is 0 0.100. My H2 is 0 0.050 divided by 1. And my H2O is, point, is 1.0, I'm sorry. 0.10 molar when I start. Okay. Now you're looking at this going, well, Mr. Siegel, what about the N2? Well, here's the thing about products, <clears throat> and I'll use an analogy. Before you start baking a cake, how many cakes do you have? Oh, yeah, none. So before you start a chemical reaction, how much product do you think you have? Uh, zero. Okay, big goose egg. Now, why is there H2? I have no idea. The person probably mixed the H2 in there in the beginning um, 
like they put a container of NO, H2, and they inserted some water. Why they did that, I do not know. But that's what they decided to do. But under, under normal circumstances, if you're not told otherwise, your products will always be zero to start. Now let's figure out what other information they have. It says at equilibrium, the concentration of the NO is 0 0.062. So in the box that's labeled equilibrium, my NO is 0 0.62 molar. Okay, well, very easily, I can see how this has changed because it has gone from 0.1 down to 0 0.062 which is a change of 0 0.038 molar. Now, here's the thing about chemical reactions. You have to remember that they are governed by their mole ratios. So however much NO changed by, the other ones will change by their mole ratio comparison. So NO to H2 is a 2 to 2 ratio. Therefore, if NO decreased by 0 0.038, my H2 is going to decrease by 0 0.038, okay? My H2O is also in a 2 to 2 ratio, but because it's a product, it will increase by 0 0.038, okay? So reactants always go down, products always go up. And then I've got my N2, and it says the N2 is a 1. Well, that's half the amount, so it will, decrease, it will increase by half of what NO was decreasing by, which will be increased by 0 0.019. Okay, do my math. So I take 0 0.050 0, divide uh, minus 0 0.038, and I get 0 0.012 molar. This one is 0 0.019 molar, and this is 0.138 molar. And these three boxes represent my answer because this question asks calculate the equilibrium concentrations of H2, N2, and H2O. And that's what I have to do for an ice box. Now let's take a now let's do something slightly different. It says the mixture of gases that results is an important industrial fuel called water gas. Oh, FYI, you're gonna see more and more word problems that have a lot of garbage in them. Just ignore them. When an equilibrium is achieved at eight hundred degrees Celsius, H two um, the concentration of H2 is 4.0 times 10 negative 2. The concentration of CO is equal to 4.0 times 10 negative 2, and H2O is equal to 1.0 times 10 negative 2. Calculate Kc at this temperature. So again, I've got my ice box. Now you'll notice I only have three columns. Why might I only have three columns, you say? Okay, well, let's look back at the chemical reaction. What did I tell you about equilibrium? Oh yeah, solids and liquids are not involved in equilibrium calculations. This guy is a solid, so I do not have to include it when I calculate equilibrium. I need it for the chemical reaction, but I do not need it for the actual equilibrium. So they tell me that the concentration of H2 at equilibrium is 4.0 times 10 to the negative 2. They tell me the CO is 4.0 times 10 to the negative 2. And they tell me my H2O is 1.0 times 10 to the negative 2. And they say calculate Kc. Oh, wait. I didn't really need to use an ice box here. Okay, but you notice the ice box still kept my information kind of nice and neat. And when you're still learning this stuff, it's useful even if you don't use all of its parts. So I'm actually going to ignore the initial and the change. I'm going to jump right into the calculation of Kc. So remember that Kc is going to be the concentration of your products raised to their coefficients divided by the concentration of your reactants raised to their coefficients. Again, no solids and liquids. So I take 4.0 times 10 to the negative 2 times 4.0 times 10 to the negative 2 divided by 1.0 times 10 to the negative 2. I have to pull out my handy dandy calculator. And now I punch in 4.0 second comma negative 2. And because it's the times 2, I'm just going to square it divided by 1 to the negative 2, and I get 0.16. And you say, uh, okay. And that's it. That's really what it is. And I hate to tell you, 
But there is no rhyme or reason to K's, really. I mean, there is, but it's it's a more deeper understanding of K's. But uh, the only thing you need to know is K can never be less than zero. I'm sorry, it can never be zero or smaller. You can never have a zero K. And you can never have a negative K. K will always be positive values. It's where it is in comparison to the value of one that actually tells you whether or not there are a lot of products or a lot of reactants. But if I look at this problem, I say, oh, look at that. You know, there's not that much product compared to the amount of reactant that's here. So, you know, because 4.0 times 10 negative 2 squared, it's split between two. 0.16 makes sense. So it says, and now let's do another one. In an equilibrium mixture, the partial pressures of SO2 and O2 are 0.215 atmospheres and 0.679 atmospheres, respectively. What is the equilibrium partial pressure of SO3 in the mixture? Okay, and they give me the Kp to start. Now, again, I could set up an icebox. However, I have no initial information. Okay, so they tell me that my SO2 and my O2 are 0.215 and 0.679 at equilibrium. Here's my Kp. Well, I know that Kp is equal to my products, SO3 squared, over my reactants, SO2 squared times O2. Okay, And they want the information. The, the numbers that they give me are for equilibrium, which are the numbers that have to go into the Kp calculation. And they want the number for the SO3 at equilibrium. So I'm just going to plug in what I know. I know my Kp is 0.345. <clears throat> I don't know what my product is, so it's just going to go in as x. And then I plug in my information for my other ones. So I've got 0.215 squared times 0.679 to the first. And now I sit down and I solve for x. Whip out the calculator. Shabam. There it is. Clear out what I had. And I just multiply. So I've got 0.345 times 0.215 squared times 0.679 equals that's not my answer because it's an x squared, so I have to take the square root. 0 0.104. And it will be ATMs. Okay? How do I know what units it's going to be? Well, I'll tell you now that the units will either be molarities or atmospheres because we're dealing with either aqueous or gases. So therefore, what do you do? You look at the problem. If the problem's listed everything in atmospheres, then you put your answer in atmospheres. If everything is listed in, in molarities, you put everything in molarities. And you also notice, like in the first problem we did, molarities and pressures are equal to each other for gases in this unit. If you'd like a deeper understanding of that, let me know, and I'll, I'll show it mathematically as to why those two things are the case. Okay, here's another one. Given this equation... Uh, H2 plus I2 yields 2HI. Calculate all three equilibrium concentrations when H2 and I2 equal 0 0.20 initially and the Kc equals 64. Okay, now this is going to combine everything we've been doing so far. So the first thing we do is make our ice box. Okay? Initial change equilibrium. H2 plus I2 yields 2HI. Okay. Now, my initial concentrations are 0 0.200, my I is 0 0.200, and my HI, because it's a product, is bam, big goose egg, zero. They tell me that Kc is 64. Excellent. Now let's figure out our change. Darn it. I don't have a change, and I don't have an equilibrium. I don't have any numbers. How am I supposed to do this? I mean, I have my Kc, and I know that 64 is equal to Hi squared over H2 times I2, which is fantastic, <clears throat> but I don't have any numbers. So how do I do this? This is a little strange. Well, here's what I'm going to tell you. I know, and I've said this previously, that because our reactants are in a one-to-one -one ratio here, I know that however much H2 changes, I2 will change by the exact same amount because they are one to one. And I know they will both decrease
because they're both reactants. I know that my HI will increase by twice that amount because there are two moles of them created for every one mole of the reactants being used up. And I know that it will increase. Well, if they're going to increase and decrease by the same amount, why don't I use a variable like x? x is going to represent my change. I know that H2 and I2 are going to decrease by the same amount, so they're minus x, minus 1x, minus 1x. HI will increase by twice that amount, so it's plus 2x. And now my equilibrium is 0 0.200 minus x, 0 0.200 minus x, and 2x. I plug all that into my formula. So now I've got 64 equals 2x squared. There's a reason I wrote it like that. Don't, don't uh, distribute yet. And I've got 0.2 minus x twice, which means it's squared. Now, notice there's something I can do. I have a square over a square. Well, I don't know about you, but I hate foiling. Can't stand it. Couldn't stand it when I learned it in high school. Can't stand it now. So rather than foil this and use the quadratic formula to solve it, I'm going to take a shortcut. And I'm going to take the square root of both sides. Okay, So this gives me 8 equals 2x over 0.2 minus x. Oh, the math is going to be so much easier this way. OK, here we go. So now I cross multiply and I solve for x. So 8 times 0.2 is 1.6 minus 8x is equal to 2x. Add 8x to both sides, so I get 1.6 is equal to 10x. Divide both sides by 10, and I get 0.16 is equal to x. Now, that's not my answer. That's my change. Okay, So I put that in here. And now I plug them in and I solve. So my concentration of my H2 will be equal to 0.2 minus 0.16, which is 0 0.040. The concentration of my I2 will also be 0 0.040. And the concentration of my HI will be 0.32 molar. And this is the answer to my problem. So you can see that it's not hard, it's a little tedious, but it actually makes a lot of sense. And the more you do of these, the better off you'll be.